These are the CDU pages used by the crew for initial pre-flight of the FMC. This lesson covers the route page and three different ways to enter a route. This lesson also covers how to use data link to uplink information to some of the CDU pages. Let's pick up the pre-flight from the position initialization page. Pre-flight of the position initialization page has been completed. Display the route page. The route page title is colored cyan, indicating there is not an active flight plan in Route 1. Let's manually enter this route from Boeing Field to Los Angeles. Begin by entering the ICAO identifier of the departure airport, KBFI, into the origin line. Next, enter the runway. Enter the ICAO identifier for Los Angeles, KLAX, as the destination. Enter the flight number. The print prompt prints a copy of the currently displayed flight plan on the flight deck printer. Page 1 is complete. Display page 2 to enter the routing. Route page 2 is where the route segments are entered. Each route segment is entered in ATC format, similar to filing a flight plan. The route segment or airway information is entered on the left, and the endpoint of the route segment is entered on the right. Enter SEA as the first endpoint under the 2 column. Direct is entered automatically into the VIA column if a route segment is not entered. Now enter the high altitude airway, J1, into the next VIA line. There may be many waypoints along your route. However, you only need to enter the end point that defines your route segment. Complete the segment by entering the endpoint AVE into the boxes under the 2 column. Continue entering the route in the order shown. Before the autoflight system can fly the route, it must be made active. Activating a route is a two-step process. First, push the Activate key. Notice the Execute light illuminates. The page title is white, and ACT indicates the route is now active. Your flight also contains a standard instrument departure and a transition onto the route. Display the departures page by pushing the departure arrival function key. The departures page is used to select the departure runway, SID, and transition for the route origin airport. Notice the departure runway is already selected because it was entered on page 1 of the route page. ACT indicates that the runway is already part of the active route. Before we select the departure, let's look at the departure arrival index page. Touch the highlighted key. The departure arrival index page is used to select the departure or arrival page for the origin or destination airports of the route. When a second route is entered, the departures or arrivals for Route 2 airports can be selected here. Departures or arrivals for other airports may be displayed by entering the airport ICAO identifier in these lines. Now return to the departures page for KBFI. Select the SID for your flight. SEL indicates that the SID is selected. Also, note the execute light is illuminated, indicating a modification is being made to the route. If we could see route page 1, it would show mod in the page title, indicating the route is being modified. 
An erase key appears, allowing you to erase the modifications and display the original active root. Let's use the erase key to erase the modifications. The root modifications are now erased and the original active root is displayed. Notice the execute light is not illuminated. Now re-enter the SID to continue with the departure. The transitions available for the selected SID are listed here. Transitions are part of the departure procedure and are designed to put you onto or near your intended route of flight. You can select Orton, Hump, or Vamps, depending on your direction of flight. Select the transition appropriate for your routing. Return to the route page. Display page 2 to check the modifications. The modifications are also highlighted. A route discontinuity exists. A discontinuity exists when two route segments are not connected together. Discontinuities must be resolved. ATC clears you from the departure transition at Orton direct to Alder. The waypoint Alder is located on J1. Connecting Orton with Alder joins the two root segments. Enter Alder into the boxes to correct the discontinuity. Make the modifications active by executing the root. The root entry portion of the preflight is now complete. Next, let's look at an easier way of entering a route by using the company route feature. Return to page 1 of the active route. A company route is a predefined route that your company has loaded into the navigation database. The entire route is entered by simply using the company route name. Enter the company route identifier. The company route has replaced the one that you entered earlier. Company routes can include the runway and SID. However, due to wind changes, the SID and runway are usually loaded from the departures page. Now, check the route segments on page 2. Execute the new route to make it active. The new route is now active. Next, let's look at how to uplink a route from dispatch. Data Link allows the FMC to talk to the computer at dispatch. The dispatcher can send data to the FMC or request data from the FMC. Similarly, you can send FMC data to dispatch or you can request data from dispatch. Data such as flight plans, performance, and takeoff data can be transmitted with Data Link. After data arrives, the crew must take action before the FMC can use it. Let's uplink a route. Display the route page. Let's begin this example with an empty route page. Request the route. The prompt indicates the request is being processed. The root request has been sent. After the data arrives from dispatch, a COM message appears. An FMC scratchpad message appears. And load and purge prompts appear. Notice the flight plan data is not displayed. If you select the purge prompt, you would delete the uplink and then dispatch would have to send another uplink. Use purge when you want to prevent the uplinked data from overriding a flight plan. The load prompt displays the uplinked FMC route. Select load. Check page 2. Dispatch has sent a complete flight plan, but you must make it active. Take appropriate action. The uplinked route is now active. As you have seen, 
There are three different ways to enter a route into Route 1. You may enter it line by line, or you can select a predefined company route, or you can uplink a route using Data Link. The Route Report prompt may be used to downlink an active route if required. The FMC is also able to load a second route, which is called Route 2. Route 2 may be entered and modified any time as an inactive route and does not alter the active route. When Route 2 is activated and then executed, it becomes the active route and Route 1 becomes inactive. The root copy key copies the active route into the inactive route. Copy active route 1 into route 2. Display route 2 to see the copied information. Inactive route 2 is displayed. Display page 2 to see the rest of the data. An inactive copy of route 1 is now in route 2. You could modify Route 2 in anticipation of a SID or runway change. You could then switch quickly to this route by making it active. You could also modify Route 2 to include an alternate destination or Route 2 could include a commonly known ATC routing change. Display the performance initialization page to continue with the data link preflight. Request the performance initialization data. Touch the highlighted key. Notice the data is loaded in small letters for immediate review. Reject clears the data from the FMC. Accept makes it permanent. Accept the data link. The performance data is accepted. Select the thrust limit page to continue with data link preflight. Note the OAT. You will need this later. Display the takeoff reference page to continue with the data link preflight. You can send data to dispatch to make the takeoff data more accurate. Enter the gross weight into the takeoff gross weight line. The scratch pad is incorrect. Display Takeoff Reference Page 2 to continue with the data link preflight. Enter the OAT. Display Page 1 to send the request for takeoff data. The request includes the airplane gross weight, departure runway, and the current temperature. Dispatch can use this information to make your takeoff data more accurate. Although it is not yet shown, Dispatch has sent two sets of takeoff data, a standard set and an alternate set. The standard set is displayed, except the standard takeoff data. The standard data is based on flaps 15. Full thrust this runway and intersection, and the gross weight you sent. Display the next page to check the data link information. The standard data is also based on the outside air temperature you sent. Dispatch has sent the standard limit takeoff gross weight. The standard takeoff data is valid up to this maximum gross weight. Dispatch has sent an alternate set of takeoff data. This set is based on an assumed temperature and a thrust D-rate. Select the alternate thrust takeoff data. 
Selecting alternate thrust creates an uplink condition similar to the previous request. However, when a previous uplink has already been accepted, the scratch pad displays takeoff data loaded. The alternate data is valid up to this maximum gross weight. The information on takeoff reference page 1 is now based on the alternate data. Return to takeoff reference page 1. The alternate thrust takeoff data must be accepted or rejected. Reject the alternate thrust data. Rejecting uplink data returns the display to the previously accepted data. Enter the route. The scratch pad is incorrect. Enter the departure SID and transition. Check the route for discontinuity. Display the route page. Correct the discontinuity. Make the modifications active. Uplink a route using data link. Check page 2. The route is inactive.